753-2020. All right, well, what's the area code for that phone number? For real though, this uh, Joe753 dude, he seems like the kind of dude who would find this video and watch it all the way through. So, hey, Joe753, independent for president, if you're watching this, I seriously implore you, uh, for whatever your uh, area code is, buy this phone number and like have it go to a recording saying, hey, vote for me in 2020. Can you count, suckers? I say the future is ours, if you can count, by Cyrus. Who is the Cyrus character? Click and see it, hear it. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I'm bored of waiting. If it looks like Trump will lose the 2020 election, there will be no election. His puppet master, Vladimir Putin, will prevent it one way or another with the eager cooperation of the Republican Party. The Democratic leaders in Congress are playing by the rules of a game that was swiped off the table in 2016, thinking it is politics as usual, Dem v. Rep, when in reality the game is war, Putin versus Uncle Sam. So every move they make is worthless and foolish. Even if they wake up and start fighting today, it's too late. If they'd started impeachment proceedings on the first day they took control of Congress and fought like rabid wolverines to bring down Trump, Mitch McConnell, and everybody else involved in the in the Trump Putin Trump Trump Putin Trump Putin conspiracy. Rah rah Trump Putin. Nah, 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 nah. Following the cover up, we may have had a chance. Instead, they sat and continued to sit by while Trump and McConnell charged full speed ahead to place lackeys in key positions, hollow out our agencies, and pack the courts with the activist conservative judges. Rep Wait a minute. Conservatives in quotes. Now, this part made me lead. This dude was against Donald Trump and therefore some sort of liberal, but now he's like saying, oh, they're not really conservatives. They're phony conservatives. Kind of like a right criticizing right E, I guess. Let's continue reading to see if we can get a better read on this dude. Republicans across the country gerrymander, purge voter rolls, shut down polling places, change laws, and do everything else they can think of to tilt the election in their favor. And yeah, that's bogus, but also, what do you really expect them to do? That's how you win the game. The game is broken, but that's how you win the game. Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff went on Morning Joe the other day to say there is a growing level of support amongst the Democratic caucus that our investigations may lead to impeachment. So, ooh, I like how he put the period on the other side of the quotes. So that is a bold move. Some people would call that improper, but he plays by his own rules, Joe 752. I keep wanting to say 573 or something because... No, 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 fuck, I fucked it up again. 753, not 752. I'm just going to call him Joe. He plays by his own rules and I admire that. So the house is being burnt down by a gang of pyromaniacs, and they are debating whether or not to put some water in their squirt gun. <sighs> this dude is edgy. Five years ago, I would have loved this dude. Now I realize that being edgy all the time is a little bit excessive. Now I'm only edgy in moderation. Only when it makes sense to be edgy. Hell yeah. I love how this webpage looks like it was made in 1996. Not that I remember much about webpages from 1996, but I've seen pictures of them. In the original version of this page, ooh, how long ago is this? The wealthy are hogging up all the money. Uncle Scam is a basket case. Is he referring to the concept of Uncle Sam and like the American dream or the... Yeah, I should probably finish the fucking sentence. <laughs> they can't even run an honest election. So, okay, so he means the entire American government makes sense. The entire economy is set up like a giant cattle ranch with us as the cows. The stupid bad guys are running free, murdering us with bullets and drugs. Hot damn, this dude is edgy. <laughs> I'm writing this in January 2017, a week before Trump's inauguration, feeling like we are about to reboot the first decade of this millennium. Well, luckily I can tell you from the future there was not another 9-11 in like 2018. Reboot is in the bigger, bolder, faster, two-boat turbocharged 4K HD on steroids with a sparkling drop of Rutz inversion. In case you aren't getting it, that means bad. Very bad. And at this point, I start wondering, is this dude for real or is this just a very elaborate hobby of his? Do not make the mistake of thinking America can't possibly become an official oligarchy rather than just the virtual oligarchy it is now. Those rich suckers can count, and they are counting on your apathy and inattention to let their congressmen, senators, 
governors and Trumps tweak the levers just a little bit more without any pesky watchdogs interfering. Trust me, it'll be great. You won't believe how unbelievable it'll be. Believe me. Fantastic! Trust me. Holy shit, where is this dude in 2012 when I just turned 18 and I was freshly eligible to vote? I would have voted for this guy in a heartbeat instead of writing in Rocky Anderson of the Justice Party because I was a fucking kid, but I would have fallen for the student in a heartbeat if he was around in 2012. My name is Joe753, and I am running for President of the United States of America because I believe that we the people still have a chance to own the future, and I can help make it happen. Well, he certainly is driven, that is for sure. Basic stats, 5'8", 190 pounds. Okay, not my first choice for a fighter, but what he has, he owns confidently, and I admire that. I wish I had actual confidence and not just a blatant disregard for whatever happened to me. No, uh, wife, no offspring? I mean, why would somebody not want to procreate with something like that? You mean that there aren't babies being born in this world with the last name 753? Come on, man, that's the last name you gotta start germinating. Original name, Joseph Edward Gotchall. Gotchall, if I'm saying that even remotely correctly. I'm from a place with a bunch of fucking Polish people, I better be saying that correctly. Changed legally to Joe 753 in 2003. All right, now we must translate from 753 E's to English. A uh, chump working on his old junk, May 29th, 1989. Same chump, I'm assuming that's chump, uh, under the, I think this dude uses X's for TH's, uh, same hood. What character is that even? Is that a U melded with an O? How do you type that? Same screwed driver, almost the same car, February 20th, 2012. I like how this dude has the balls to say, yeah, none of us pronounce that second R in fe None of us pronounce the only R, no, the first R in February. <laughs> you see, this man has his shit together and I don't. This man truly deserves to be my leader. Personality, because I want a candidate I feel like I can have a beer with. Like a lot of American baby boomers. Okay, that's not a good mark, but you know what? He didn't choose to be born in 1960. I will not allow myself to be prejudiced. I don't think that Mr. Joe 753 would want me to be prejudiced. I have been heavily influenced by movies and TV shows, more than by my parents, certainly, and probably more than by my friends and teachers growing up. My biggest influence was Mr. Spock from Star Trek. He instantly clicked with me on some basic natural trait within my brain, setting me on the logic path of mental growth in my formative years. Now, knowing what I know about this dude, I literally cannot tell if logic being spelt this way is his own... Uh, 753 E's, or maybe even the world of Star Trek, that's like an entirely sovereign concept, but let us continue. I believe this had an actual, real-world, practical effect on me because even though, he spells though like a millennial, alright, he is not necessarily a baby boomer culturally, I am not a genius or well-educated. My ability to solve supposedly impossible problems has been proven many times. I like his self-confidence, that's what I need in a president. Other influences were Dirty Harry, man's gotta know his limitations, Speed Racer, and The Driver, I can drive like a bat out of hell. And Maxwell Smart, I have a goofy streak, did some stand-up in the early 90s. I hope there's some footage of that floating around, because I want to see that. Uh, oh my lord. Alright, so at this point, I'm... Is he saying that he has based his personality around these fictional characters? I feel... Like, that is something that a lot of people do, but not many people have the balls to admit. I think most people in this media frenzy world we live in do base their personality off fictional characters, but that's such a social faux pas to come right out and say it. This Mr. Joe753, he's got the balls to say that. I am digging this dude. Seriously, Joe, where the fuck were you in 2012? My adolescent mind needed you, and you failed me. You weren't there when I needed you, Joe. Are these his influences? Why are Osama and Adolf over here? Okay, now I'm legitimately hung up on this picture, and forgive me, I can't say anything funny for a few seconds. I think what he's actually trying to convey is the closer to the front they are, the more like them they are, and then the farther back they are, the more he dislikes them. I feel like I'm expecting to know who this character right here is. I do not. Somebody, if anybody ever fucking watches this, 
You know what? I'm sure Joe himself will watch this, and he will tell me exactly who every single one of these people are, whether I know who they are or not. And for that, I appreciate you, Joe. Why the name Joe753? Back in the early 80s, I took a job as a driver at Chicago Messenger Service. My number was 753. One morning, within my first few weeks, I was dropping off a package, and the guy at the, at, at the will call desk is saying, Hey, I won the lotto. 753. Big surprise when I tell them, that's my driver's number. A few minutes later, I'm driving away, and there's a limo in front of me, and the license plate was 753. All right, this dude believes in numerology. That might not be the wisest thing in the grand scheme of things, but I like a man who takes a leap of faith. I never cared for Joseph Gottschall. People can't pronounce it. Well, actually, Mr. 753, I would argue that that would be more failure than yours, because... You're from Chicagoland. People here have to know how to pronounce Polish last names. It's a fucking residency requirement. For weeks, I mulled over all sorts of ordinary names. Names of characters from my favorite sci-fi. Completely new name ideas. Nothing worked. Nothing felt like it fit me. I considered just plain Joe, but saw the problems I'd have filling out forms online. Ending up with Joe, no second name carved into my tombstone, and enterprising young funeral home droid in the far-flung future. Found on a credit card application from 2012. All right, so Mr. Five or Seven Fifty Three, he understands that actions have consequences, and he thinks ahead of things. If he didn't do that, he would have gone with just plain Joe. But no, he realized he needed to have a last name to avoid a bunch of problems in the future. I like a man with vision. It was Saturday, April fifth. The numbers showed up on something, and then it hit me. That can be my name. Maybe God or fate or whatever has been trying to tell me for all this long. The functional advantages also appealed me. First, it's very short. When I have to sign my name, it saves me a lot of time. Alright, this man believes in practicality. Secondly, it fulfills the essential identifier function of a name perfectly, because not only are there no other Joe 753s in the world, there's nothing even close. Alright, this man believes in the power of the individual. Joe, where the fuck were you in 2012? God damn it! <laughs> My days. I feed the squirrels, birds, and fishes in the morning. I wake up whenever and have a chocolate shake. Ovaltine, one banana, one egg, we germ. Then get on the internet to check email and post junk on forums. <laughs> Alright, well, he... He he has what he... Ha he is what he is and he owns up to it. That is an important quality in a leader. I, capital L, like to watch some daytime TV shows such as Steve Wilkos, Jerry Springer, Judge Alex, Cops. It gives me a view into how some people live within the less than optimal environments created by the rules within our government. Alright, so this dude reads the subtext into what many would regard as trashy daytime television. I like to watch a DVD or, I'm assuming that's Blu-ray, late at night. Lately I've been doing the TV show marathon thing, so binging, but he is a... Baby Boomer, so that word is not necessarily in his vocabulary. Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Battlestar Galactica, Caprica, Walking Dead, Firefly. We're going to come back to that one. There's something I'm saving for the end. Assuming I don't forget to record it. Uh, community, great stuff. I put food out for the raccoons and possums at night. I believe we need to live in the ecosystem as neighbors with the native species. Good neighbors. Friendly neighbors. Not conquering aliens intent on plunder and ruin. It bothers me when I see people throw away perfectly good food when there are hungry creatures right outside the door who would be happy to take it away instead of becoming part of the growing garbage problem. Alright, so this man's always also got an environmental bent. I can appreciate that. I'm not that's not my like biggest concern, but it is a concern that I do have, so I can I can get I can get behind this dude. If people looked after their time as diligently as they looked after their money, they wouldn't spend so much time looking after their money. Me, 2012. So you were around in 2012. Why weren't you running for president back there? Or did you just not promote yourself enough? <sighs> well, you know what? What is in the past cannot be fixed, but let's move forward. Excuse me, what is this? Angelinu Simon Korguo. The Angel, the Alien, and the Ape you see in the audience above, and some of the header pictures are from the New Alf Revolution website. I originally created them for the A picture on the New Alf charts, then expanded their roles to present various perspectives on spelling reforms. You know who else, honest to God, had spelling reform for the English language be part of their platform? Theodore Roosevelt. That was an honest-to-God thing. I don't know if that was when he was already president or when he was running again on that, like, bull moose party thing, but that was, like, one of those 
historical factoids. He really did want to overhaul American English spelling to make it more phonetic. So, this dude is taking thoughts from people who know what they are doing. He's got good influences. I can dig that. On a fundamental basis, they represent superiority to the currently accepted range of normal human thought. It is not really our brains that are lacking. It is the sorry state of the logique within the within that leads adults into all sorts of disadvantageous behavior. Bad for themselves, bad for the nation, bad for the world. I really should make some time to write proper bios for these characters. If I had the money, I would hire people to create all sorts of stories, comics, cartoons, etc. Perhaps if I get elected, creative people will be inspired to take them farther than I ever could. Now right here, I relate with this, because he realizes there are things that he wants to do, things that he really should be doing, he just doesn't have the time. I don't have the time to do all the things I've got to do, all the things I want to do, but I have dreams that, you know what, if things start going right for me, then things will start going really right, and maybe, maybe, everything will all fall into place. This man may indeed be my spirit animal. And I just love the sparkly flares on his signature down here. Let's learn more about his policies. Uh, let's, ooh, guns! I don't know if you can see this, but down here in the URL, wait, fuck. Alright, can you see in the bottom left corner all those, uh, URLs? Financial... Pa! Okay. Oh, oh, pay. Pay and work. Tax. And vermint. I was so ready to start reading, I didn't even think to look at this picture up here. Alright, so we have... Oh, he's not Rambo, he's Ram Joe, and he's... Shooting up the NRA headquarters with a... I thought that was like a fucking squirt gun for a second that was painted differently. No, that's just a regular gun. Oh, how the tables have turned. Chris Vector submachine gun. Rate of fire, 1,200 per minute. And as our friend George Washington here says, Oops. What does he have to say about tax? Well, he's got plenty of pictures of tax and... <laughs> <sighs> You motherfucker, how did you make me laugh? <laughs> is he trying to make me laugh, or do you just literally think that was a good choice? I don't. I can't get a read on this man. And I like it. I like a man who's complex enough that I can't easily get a read on him. Just like Einstein said, if the human mind was so simple that we could understand it, then we would be so simple that we could not. And this man does not have a simple mind. <laughs> The bigger the population, the more money it takes. The stupider and meaner we are, maximum and average, the more money it takes. Now, time out. I am impressed with how this dude takes so much care to point out that society, in general, is just getting more and more fucking dickish in the last few years, and he seems to want to fix that, or at the very least address it in ways that other people don't want to. So many people are saying, oh, people are just as shitty as they've always been. No, 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 no. They're getting worse. I've, I haven't been around for a fucking century, but I do remember people were not this shitty 10 years ago. They were not this shitty five years ago. We're getting worse and we're getting worse fast. And Joe, uh, 753 2020, he wants to go ahead and take some action to make that not be the case anymore. Okay, maybe I'm stupid, but is his head decapitated here and put on top of a stack of tax papers? Or is he sleeping while he happens to have a body made of tax papers. I would think he was decapitated, but I don't see any blood down here, and we've clearly established that our friend Joe753 here is he's totally edging enough to have blood all over the goddamn place if that would make it easier for us to understand what this picture is, so... I'm thinking this is a picture of him if he were a pile of tax forms, taking a little nap in the afternoon sun. As you can see, the light source over here. By the way, I just realized something. View page black on white. He is courteous enough to let us toggle how we want to view his page. Do we want to see it the classic way, white text on a or black text on a white background, or do we want to save some light on our devices and go with the black background? And all the while, this is on the environmental page, which shows um some CGI alien creatures in front of what seems to be Chicago. I mean, that's clearly the John Hancock Center. Uh, that building does not really exist. That building doesn't exist, at least not in this city. 
Uh, isn't there a building like this in London or something? I thought that was Navy Pier, but I'm not sure anymore. What the fuck is this? This is just the super future world city. If we ought to take care of the environment, we're going to live in a city where the world repeats itself. Like, here's the close John Hancock Center. Here's the far away John Hancock Center. Hello, I see you. And also, if we don't take care of the environment, there will be babies covered in flies. And I don't wish being covered in flies upon my worst enemy. Healthcare! It's not about the money! Oh wait, it is! I mentioned that I want to vote for a candidate I feel like I can have a beer with, and just by the way this dude talks, he and I would get along pretty well. Although I would have gotten along with him better when I was an edgy 18 year old, but we'll leave that in the past. Also, this dude wants to get us back into space and like exploring Mars and shit, and uh, give a hundred billion dollars to NASA. Uh, that's not my biggest priority, but I would like to see that happen again in my lifetime. I feel fucking robbed that that happened during my parents' lifetime, and I will never know what it's like to have somebody walking on the moon. So yes, I would like to get that back. Uh, not my biggest concern, but I am totally on board with that. Another point for Joe 753 2020. 753-2020, dial now and you will not die. Okay, it took me a second to figure this one out. Uh, he crossed out the 20 and wrote 18, 17. He thought that he was going to replace the entire Republican cabinet after they all got impeached as he explains about the trump conspiracy. The trump show, written, directed, and produced by Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin and the FSB, sets lighting cinematography by Rupert Murdoch and company. This actually reads like an honest-to-God playbill. I am impressed with the formatting he put in here. I want a leader who pays attention to details and goes all in on a joke like this. It's not looking good for Trump and his cronies. I got 50 bucks riding on him being out of office before 11.59.59 p.m. December 31st, 2017. <sighs> Mr. Joe 753, I say this as your friend, you will get so much more credibility if you tell us exactly who you paid that 50 bucks to because you clearly did lose that bet. Coming February 19th, 2018, presidents say, the McNothing Burger. That looks pretty decent, actually. I hate the fact that I find that food delicious looking. <laughs> Even though up here it's clearly CGI'd in, but let's pretend it isn't. <laughs> Actually, no, fuck it. Let's pretend this is CGI'd in. I'd like to imagine virtual food as fewer calories. What if... Alright, Mr. Joe753, I recommend adding to your platform that you petition the uh, nutritional scientific community to pioneer virtual food that will allow people to taste all the junk food they love with none of the calories and none of the adverse health effects. I would vote for you in a fucking heartbeat if you got that done. I s my hand on a fucking Bible, I would. Alright, and here's this page I was campaigning back when he was running for governor two years ago. Uh, Bruce Rauner, 500 million venture capital. J.B. Pritzker, the second richest uh, politician in American history after Bloomberg, uh, 3,700,000,000. Joe753, net worth negative 130,000. All right, well, he makes no bones about it. He just comes right out and says it. The no money campaign for governor of Illinois. I would vote for somebody who's fucking broke. I relate to them more than Browner or Pritzker. I would have if I knew you were on the ballot, dude. I lost. I came up about 2 million votes short. Obviously, this page is now obsolete, but I'll leave it online anyway, just for the chuckles. Well, you got some chuckles out of me, Mr. 753. November 28th update. I just got the vote totals. I got six. Really? Because Wikipedia says he got 16. I don't want to be governor. A governor does not have the power to fix the main problems of the state because they are the nation's problems. I said that's... I, I didn't see where that sentence was going, so I inflected it funny. Because they are the nation's problems. But there are four reasons for me to apply for the job. Number one, it could help me with my 2020 presidential campaign if I have the title of governor. You can't jump to the top of the warped wall in one bound. Number two, having some related job experience might actually be helpful as president. All right, this guy understands that he needs to work toward his goals. Three, I need to pay some bills. As I am writing this, I am expecting an unpleasant letter from the mortgage company. The utility bills are stacking up and the fridge is dead. Well, uh, maybe you shouldn't have given all that food to the raccoons.
and $3,411.77 per week sounds like great pay to me. That's way more than I have ever earned doing real work. And number four, the most important reason, we need to strike a blow against big money. A penniless working man stealing the election from two parties and their super rich candidates would be a nice way to kick off a rebellion against a run amok system that will never be fixed by the government or political parties. All right, so this guy, he never wanted to be governor. He didn't do it. He didn't want to. But he felt the need to run for governor because he had a sense of duty. And you know what they say, good leadership is not an egocentric quest for power. Good leadership is stepping up to the plate and being the leader that a group needs because somebody's got to do it and nobody's going to do it well. But somebody who doesn't necessarily want to be in charge realizes they have the power to do something that nobody else realizes they have the power to do, that nobody else actually does have the power to do, or that nobody else has the vision to do. He is doing something he doesn't want to do for the greater good. That is leadership. Joe753, maybe I'm just a sucker for taking all your self-marketing and giving it a thumbs up, but god damn, you paint yourself well. There is an ad campaign. Uh, Mr. Uh, 753, please do not copyright strike me for playing this video. I just want to learn more, and I want to spread your gospel, as it were. All right, here we go. Here we go. Am I going to get, like, double copyright strike for you watching that? I swear to God if I do. Come on, man, say something. I want to know if you're a good public speaker. That's an important trait to have in a president, you know. Actually, it appears he's just lazy in bed and watching reruns of... Come on, man, I can't, wa I can't read that fast. Does he not realize that Pritzker and Rauner are burning through more than 150... God damn it, dude. Are you ableist against people who can't read that fast? I'm not pausing the fucking video. <gasps> he said something. I think he said something. Our king has spoken. This guy looks like a Polak named Joe. Tell the oligarchs that your vote is not for sale. Tell the GOP and DOC to take their gang war elsewhere. Vote for ideas, not for dollars. 753-2020.com. Writing Joe 753 for governor. I, dude, you need to make that your phone number. Whatever your area code is, 753-2020. There, you can thank me on your deathbed. Sunday, November 4th, 2018 update. Participated in a debate last Tuesday with another candidate, Dan Fine of the Socialist Workers Party. There were supposed to be three more candidates, but they'd shaken out. Those pussies, they don't want to take on Joe 753. I thought I did okay in my first public debate, but after watching the vid, I kind of wish my car broke down on the way there. I was disorganized, didn't answer questions coherently, digressed, said King Ryan instead of Madigan, and leaning back made my le neck look flabby. You know what? I can dig this. I like a candidate who is willing to admit, yeah, they are flawed, but goddammit, they're trying to get better. Because, you know what? Our society, uh, we live in a society, I know it's a fucking meme, but go with it. We love the idea of self-improvement, but we don't like to accept that to improve yourself, you have to suck at something beforehand, and we don't want to give any love to that sucky person who's still on their way on the up and up. We only want to give them approval when they are at the up and up. This dude right here, he'll tell you straight up he's sucked in the debate. Where's, where's the footage of it, though? He probably deleted it. Now... I will say, Mr. 753, you could have even more credibility if you showed us this footage of you sucking in this debate against Mr. Uh, Fine of the Socialist Workers Party. But I understand that you're still trying to improve. That's, that's why I like it, Joe. That's why I like you. You're still trying to improve. And that's my advice to you. This is something you can do to further improve. I'll help you out. You help me. All right, I'll help you improve yourself, I'll help you get elected, and then you make my life stop being stressful in any capacity. Just make my life a fucking cakewalk, that's how you can repay me. All right, now remember earlier when I randomly said that this dude's a fan of the show Firefly? Well, here on the FireflyFans.net forums, we see a post, Joe753 for president with a Z. This is back when he was much more into his uh, 753Es with his uh, very phonetic spellings that didn't beat around the bush. All right, so he's the original poster. May 6th of 2016. 
Okay, Trump is clearly not qualified in any way to be president of the United States of America. But you aren't very enthusiastic about Hillary either, so what to do? If you are still a Republican, he he he, you know the gig is up and if the Donald wins, because he will surely drive us into the same ditch that Bush did, only faster. So your choice is simple. Stay home on election day. He wasn't going to win anyway. Ah... <sighs> Simpler times. Simpler times. And since I know none of you GOPs would ever vote for an ultra-progressive liberal like me, you should still vote, but write in your own name. I like that. He's telling his opponents to still have self-esteem and believe in themselves. He's saying, hey, if you don't believe that I can do a good job, I'd like to see you do better. So vote for yourself and you become the president of the United States and you show me how it's done. Wow, I... That is a ballsy move. I dig it. All right, so that was May 6th. On May 7th, he replies to himself... Uh, that would mean you can't vote for anybody except for yourself. Then nobody could win. Oh, I see. Ingenious... Does that seem right to you by Jubal Early, who I... Didn't Jubal Early fight for the Confederacy? Uh, okay. Let me tell you about America under the 753 administration. It will be the greatest ever, believe me. It will be so great, we will need to build a 200-foot wall around the entire thing. We'll be keeping out illegal immigrants from Germany and Saudi Arabia. Oil sheiks trying to sneak in, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply concerned about all those illegal immigrants from Germany, all those fucking kraut bastards. Get them out of my country. Four hours later, I know you're waiting for it. Elephant in the room, we gotta talk about my competitors. Hillary, John Kasich, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Ted Cruz, every single one. He has a rebuttal for every single one. He is prepared. And now... Somebody else chimes in. Jules State fan. I'm guessing that's a character from Firefly. I, I, I imagine. Count me anyone but Joe. <sighs> Ye of little faith. Okay, we got a vote. Ooh. He's keeping it positive. He's keeping it positive. He knows he has somebody's attention. And although this person's saying he will not be voting for him, he knows that the first step is getting their attention. Now that he has their attention, he just has to retool what this Jewel State fan thinks of our friend Joe 753. On Monday the 9th, second, where are you? As the smartest member here, I was expecting you to throw your hat into the ring. But don't wait too long or I'll be drafting you as my vice president. And just like clockwork, who does the next reply come to but second themselves? Second, where are you? Second is right here. And they say, don't pick me. I think one of a very few simple qualifications for being the president is a proven ability to plan ahead for events that are inevitable, such as the annual flooding and elections. Anybody who waited until May 26, uh, 2016 to declare they're running for president is a body proven to be unable to plan ahead. And to that, our friend and leader, Joe752, 753, goddammit, says, No, you. <laughs> Three things wrong here. The president needs to be able to take quick action when the opportunity presents itself. So he, he had the epiphany in May. He needs to run for president that November. He's going to hit the ground running. He's going to make up for lost time. God damn it. I love that drive in him, Joe. Joe, you are a son of a bitch and I love it. Our next reply, May 9th. Next reply after that, May 14th. Then November 8th. Then, oh wait, November 8th. Voted today, went with all the Dems on the ballot, whether I knew them or not, but there were one-offs that had no Democratic challenger to the Republican State House representative. There was the write-in option, so I wrote my name. So if absolutely no one else bothers to vote for the Illinois State House representative, I will win. I wonder what the pay is. All right, some might call this guy a fool for having such high hopes, but you know what I realized not too long ago? Cynicism might be the cool thing to do but it doesn't get much done. Positivity does. And this man is positive, like HIV. <laughs> I told you I'm an edgelord in moderation. <laughs> November 15th, okay, quit nagging. I am officially beginning my 2020 campaign right now. All right, this time around, he is not wasting any time. Last replies were in December of 2019, so that was only hey, two and a half months ago. He's still serious about it. And, uh, closing thoughts, Mr. Joe, 753, 
2020, whatever the area code on that is. I really could have used you emotionally as my presidential candidate in 2012. I, I'm not, this is not a bit. I seriously believe if I was aware of you in 2012, I, I would have written your name in because I wouldn't have had any inhibitions about doing it back then. Uh, nowadays, I'm not so sure, but you know what? I will do you a favor. I will make this. I will post this. People might see it, and maybe it will spread the word of the 753-2020 campaign. And maybe if you can uh, use this momentum to uh, legitimize yourself further, then maybe I will vote for you. Uh, time will tell. Ball's in your course, Mr. Joe 753. I keep I, I'm dyslexic with fucking numbers. I keep wanting to say 527 or something like that. <sighs> Remember to vote, children. <laughs>